As the number of integration and automation projects grow, it becomes increasingly important to manage the lifecycle of recipes. By designing a robust process for recipe lifecycle management, your team can build a framework for collaboration between dev, QA, and ops teams, create scalable and functional models built for agility and speed, minimize the risks of downtime and missed SLAs, and above all, develop high responsiveness to meet business demands. Throughout this demo, we'll walk you through the five steps you can employ for your recipe lifecycle management. It all starts with the setting up of fundamental but separate environments for development, testing, and production. Next, we'll define roles and responsibilities and assign the right permissions and access policies, set up standards and naming conventions, create folders for organizing projects, and construct privacy settings for our data. After that, we'll walk through the built-in tools in Workato like manifests, packages, test data, and version control that you can use to move your deployment packages across these environments. Then, even though processes may vary across organizations, teams, and companies, we'll explore some common practices for controlling and coordinating deployment. Lastly, we'll share some of these ideas and inspirations for automating your deployment and how to create a CI-CD pipeline for recipes. Let's dive into what environments provide. It's common to have separate environments for development, testing, and production. All the new projects and change requests for enhancements flow into a business backlog. Your dev team works on a prioritized queue request from that backlog in each sprint, building and running their own unit tests. When the recipes are ready for testing, they're eventually moved to the QA environment. There, our QA team runs standard tests on those new or modified recipes. The ones that pass get deployed in the production environment and go live, while the ones that fail the tests return to the development queue for further modifications. In addition to having separate Workato environments, it's also important to have separate dev, test, and production data sets for your apps, as you don't want your dev team to have access to read or modify your production system, and vice versa. With our environments now set up, we'll want an efficient system of governance. We'll start with defining policies and permissions for a team member's role. For example, you can set up roles like the project lead, who coordinates the release cycles, a Workato chef who's responsible for recipe, design, creation, and building reusable assets, or the Workato operator for your production environment with permissions to run jobs and view job history. Workato provides fine-grained permissions to set up role-based access controls for each environment. In your Workato workspace, you can go to Tools, then to Teams, to manage the collaborators and define access policies. In this example, we've set up a custom role for the Workato Chef in our dev environment. This role has access to view, create, and edit recipes, but doesn't have permission to delete them. Similarly, the Workato operator for our production environment will have access to view job history, as well as run jobs, but is restricted to only those two. Depending on your environment and processes, you can use the standard roles, or you can create custom roles for your environment with any combination of permissions. On top of this, folders in Workato provide an easy way to organize recipes and connections by functional area, project name, or other conventions you might follow. They're an easy and safe way to separate data, recipes, and connections. In our app connections, we can look at our data replication folder and see the connections isolated to it. It contains all our database connections related to billing, security, and more. You can also restrict folder access when setting up roles. For example, a Workato Chef for the data team can only access recipes and connections in the data replications folder. Similarly, you can move your HR, payroll benefits, and other application connections to an HR folder, your NetSuite, SAP, Coupa, Bill.com, and other connections to our finance folder, and so on. In our Dev Team's Recipes home folder, we can see multiple subfolders and other items within them. Each of these is grouped by their functionality or project, such as being mainly related to HR tasks, Slack automations, or others. Going further in and exploring the Slack folder, we can see more subfolders and recipes each sorted by their tasks and data in Slack. 
As you can see, folders can really be customized and sorted in whatever manner your project needs. Now we'll dive into a demo exploring various tools available in Mercado to move recipes contained in a project folder between different environments. In our dev environment, we can explore the Slack folder from earlier. Let's look at this recipe in particular. On changing a candidate status in Greenhouse, we should search and update a lookup table, log our output, and be notified on Slack. But for us to move this recipe from dev to test, we'll not only need to move the recipe, but include all of the dependent resources like the lookup table. Similarly, for other recipes in this folder, they can involve specific templates for applications, account variables, or custom workflows and bots. When working on large projects where you have to move hundreds of recipes like this and their dependent objects, manually copying or recreating them in each environment can be daunting and tedious. So we'll use some of Workato's tools to help ease that process. In your tool section, we'll navigate to Recipe Lifecycle Management. To move our project, we'll build a deployment package called a manifest containing all our assets. We'll title our manifest Slack Automations and pick the Slack folder to be our source since it contains everything relevant to our project. On the next page, we're given two different views of all the items inside the Slack folder. In the middle is a line item view with each item individually listed and where in the folder it is. We can see all dependencies associated with our recipes like the connectors at the top and what recipes they're each individually connected to which folder each recipe is in, as well as each recipe's dependencies in a drop-down list below it, as well as APIs at the bottom, along with templates and other miscellaneous dependencies. Additionally, in the top right, we have a summary view. This summary gives us quick numbers on what's included in the manifest we're currently building and how many there are of each type. On confirmation, we can finalize our manifest, build it out, and download a local copy to move to our test environment. Now we'll switch over to our test environment and bring in the manifest we just created. Currently, the Slack folder in our test environment is completely empty. To bring in our exported manifest, we go to Recipe Lifecycle Management and choose the Import option. Here, we'll get our local copy of the export manifest but this can easily be done through some sort of version control like SVN or GitHub to get the code and recipes that you need. Our target folder will still be our test environment Slack folder where we'll update it to be the same as the one in our dev environment. Before we're done with the import, a review of each item appears in a line item view, the same as in the export. Once we've gone through all the items and seen the updates that have been made, we can confirm everything and finalize our import. Then, checking our Slack folder again, we see it's been completely updated. All the recipes and subfolders are the same as our dev environment, and everything is completely up to date. But over time, our projects will change and update so that previous manifests are out of date. At that point, we need to export our project again to get our updated version into our other environments and make sure they're synced up for our latest round of testing. If we use the same process as before, we can go to the export we previously made and try to rebuild it since our source folder is the same. But prior to building it out, we're notified that there are changes in our manifest since the last time we built it. On review, it shows that different changes have been made. Some recipes had their location changed, others were directly modified, and some new recipes were added. While the only changes we saw before were new recipes being included since it was a new export. Once we confirm those changes to be appropriate, instead of exporting our entire project again, we can just select the items we want to export since we already have a previous version of our project in our test environment. We deselect everything else, confirm our choice, and build out the new manifest, holding only our latest updates. And then, on importing our manifest, we can see what changes will be made to the test version of our project. Only a few changes will be made, the same as the ones made in the dev version, since we've only chosen to update a few things. Thus, once imported, we can check our folder once again 
to see that those exact updates have been made. Now that we're able to move between environments, we can define various processes for our entire workflow. Release processes can vary by organizations, projects, or company, but regardless of how you set up the release process for deploying changes across environments, Workado provides a rich set of tools, platform APIs, and workflows that can fit your needs. First, you can design the deployment process for Workado recipes by defining who can export the packages, which source control system you'd like them to use and check into and out of, what will the PR review and approval process look like as a whole, and what kind of tests you'll run after the deployment is finished. Once the deployment processes are then in a steady state, you can use Ricotta recipes to automate the workflows in the CICD pipeline for efficiencies. Ricotta also provides connectivity to a broad set of apps like Git, Bitbucket, Jenkins, Jira, Bamboo, CodeShip, and many others in DevOps tool chains to help automate your pipelines. With everything now set up, all that's really left is to automate it. This is a sample automation built using Workado recipes and Workado's unique low to no code app development platform for Slack, like Workbot. In this example, the project lead can kick off the deployment package export directly from Slack. With recipes that use Workado's platform APIs for recipe lifecycle management, the deployment package is automatically exported from the dev environment and imported into the test environment. The QA team can then start automating testing to validate the modified recipes and create the deployment package for production based on their outcomes. Next, a PR request is created for review and approval, and once the PR request has been approved, the deployment package can finally be deployed into the production environment. Workado helps provide for zero downtime deployment by automatically switching jobs between the older version of the recipes in production with the newly deployed ones to make sure that no matter what you're doing, you'll always be up to date and ready to go.